8%. Studies show that's the percentage of people who fulfill their dreams. The rest do not. If you're part of the other 92% who want to get more out of this life, I've got great news for you. David Nurse is going to show you the way. Best-selling author David Nurse is an MBA life and optimization coach. He has worked with over 175 MBA players on and off the court, coached with the Brooklyn Nets, and is a top 50 worldwide keynote speaker. But it didn't start out this way. Growing up in Iowa, David had big dreams of playing in the NBA until he was cut from his international team. Instead of giving up, he shifted his mindset and changed his career. In his book, Do It, David tells you how to remove the roadblocks that can keep you from taking action on your goals. This is a fascinating book I've highlighted, I've underlined it, I've marked the pages, real good stuff. I, I've not read a book like this before. Very, very unique. David, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having Good me on. Have you. Appreciate so it. you specialize in working with, in one of your specialties, working with NBA players. These guys get paid a ton of money. Yes. They're yes. at the top of their field. So why do, why do they enlist your help? What do you do with them? Because when you're at that high of a level, and there's so much pressure on you every single day, every single game, millions of dollars, millions of eyes. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to take another step, take another level to be able to block out any insecurities, any self-doubt, because they're all human. They struggle with it, too. Just like yeah. us, which is crazy to see these superhuman athletes. And then they come to me and they miss a few shots and like, David, I can't do it. They've been doing it all their life. All though. their lives. And you would think that. But just like all of us, yeah. we all struggle with fears. So where do you start? Because I'm asking this because not just it's fascinating what you do with these pro athletes, but for everybody watching this program, you got moms and dads, grandparents, young athletes, students. What totally. keeps pro athletes and us blocked? What are the concerns that keep us from achieving what we want to achieve? So this might sound simple, but it's not. We are our own biggest defenders. So everybody in their life is where you're at right now. Imagine where you're at right now the place that you want to get to. There is a valley in there with this covered by self-doubt, uncertainty, mm -hmm. fear. And the only way over to be where, where I say is our full potential, which is actually our full alignment with God, who God has created okay. us to be, is taking action, taking strategic, radical action when we don't know where it's going to land. It's taking a chance and not knowing if it's going to work out. So fear, and there's, there's nine different archetypes that I outline in mm -hmm. the book, Do It, the life-changing power of taking action, which hold us back. And we, we understand, okay, is it fear of other people's opinions? That's a big one, isn't it? We're oh, so concerned what people so think about big. us. And really, do they really care that much, that's, honestly? That's the funny thing. Like, we think about it, like someone says something or makes a, a smirk at us. and We aren't paying attention at all. Yeah, we're not paying attention at all. We spend the rest of our day thinking about what we think they're thinking about. They're thinking about themselves or what they're having for dinner. They rarely care. And so that ke fear of what people think is one yes. thing that keeps us from taking action. And taking action is really the big part of your book here. Taking action is everything. God has created us to take action. I don't think God created anybody to just go through the motions yeah. or play it safe. He's created us to be big. But this world tells us, no, you have to stay in your little box. Or what will somebody else think if you go for your dreams? And we ultimately hold ourselves back because we, one, we don't trust that God has that plan for hmm. us, and we walk in fear instead of faith. What are we afraid of? We're afraid of, we're afraid of a lot of things. We're afraid of not, it not working out. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of the difficulties that you'll have to go through. But isn't it fascinating, too, in the Bible where every single person in there yeah. went through some kind of crazy difficulty, but achieved greatness? Because God has that planned for all of us. Who are some of the folks that really stand out to you in your book? You did a lot of research. You yes. incorporate how the brain yes. functions in all of this with our fears and, and what goes on. Who are some of the folks that really stand out to you? So John Osteen was one of my favorites that I researched about as the underestimator. So John came from Paris, Texas. A small, Joel Osteen's dad. Joel Osteen's father, yeah. yes. From this small farmland and, and didn't have anything like really big going for him. And we can really... You know, think about that in our own lives where we underestimate ourselves. We didn't come from anything. We weren't from the right school. And he decided to flip the script when he felt this calling on his life to be a pastor. But he could have stayed in that same spot of like, well, little me. And, yeah. and I say there's, there's two types of people in life. It's the people who say, well, why me? 
why am I called for greatness? Why can I have a great life? And those who say, why not me? And that's the biggest difference right there for the underestimator. And John said, well, why not me? Mm -hmm. I feel this calling. Why not me? Somebody has to do it. And, of course, he's gone on to start Lakewood and an amazing, and amazing church. Leading. And now Joel, his son's and leading. You, in your book, you point out briefly, but you point out being underestimated is not a bad thing. No, right? I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, if you use it correctly. Yeah. I love being underestimated because then you don't have those high expectations, which another thing is people have expectations upon themselves that hold themselves back. But if you're underestimated, what do you have to lose? Why you? Why did you write this book in the sense of what was your journey to get you to this place? Yeah, I've also always been fascinated with why people hold themselves back, whether it's athletes, mm -hmm. CEOs, or just anybody in general of the excuses that we'll make. And excuses will always be there if we decide that we'll, they'll be there. And I feel like t too many people, just, they stay in their situation because they can't see the vision for the future. And I say this as, in the terms of, there's this term called self-efficacy. I think it's a game changer. Yeah. So self-efficacy is living today as if the person you want to be tomorrow. So living today as if the person that God has created you to be your full alignment with God. And it's living in those habits and having the visualization of, oh, I can see where I want to go. I know where God's calling me. I'm going to take steps towards there every day. And I just talk about 1% steps, just one step mm -hmm. forward a day. You're never going to get there quickly, but if you take that one step daily, eventually it's going to happen. And, and usually when you do, when you do it in full alignment with God's plan, it's going to happen even better than you can imagine. It's just, mm -hmm. just how he works. So we're afraid of what people think. Yes. We're afraid to fail. Uh, sometimes, too, don't we start to blame other people for where we're at or why we can't achieve it? Oh, blaming other people. We, we blame and we are burnt by the past. I, I think blaming and being burnt kind of go hand in hand. Like we'll want to say it's somebody else's fault because we seek internal validation and we don't like to admit that we're wrong. But even being burnt by the past, so many people suffer from this because it's something in the past mm is holding them back from their future. So the past is just a teacher, it's a learner to be able to use. So if you had some pain in your past, it's not, okay, you're stuck in that pain, and there's something called traumatic age regression, where it means if you do not go address that past pain, your body is stuck in that. 70% of Americans actually suffer from this. So think about in your own life, is there something in your past that you haven't forgiven someone, some mm -hmm. situation, to be able to move past? So the pain that we have in our lives is actually, it's our purpose. Our pain becomes our purpose if you see it that way. And so, but if you use it as, oh, woe is me, I was burnt. I, I'm, ah, I got in a relationship and I got dumped. I'm never going to put my heart out there on the line. I did a business deal and I got burnt. I'm never going to try it again. No, everybody who has achieved anything great, like these people I outline and do it, they all went through struggles. They all went through yeah. times of just incredible hardship. Anyone else stand out to you in particular you want to mention? We, we mentioned uh, Osteen. Anyone yeah, else? Osteen. Well, with Burnt, Lewis Latimer, mm -hmm. fascinating guy. I'd never heard of him before. So I was doing all this research, and now I'd always been a Malcolm Gladwell book fan where he comes up with these people from history. You're like, where the heck did that yeah. guy come from? So Lewis Latimer, he ends up being the guy, like literally the person who helps Thomas Edison and Alexander Graham Bell with the electricity yeah. and with the telephone. Like, without him... But he'd been burnt by the past. He'd been burnt. His father left him. He was discharged from the Navy. So many difficulties happened to him. And if he would have lived in that instead of said, okay, I have a calling. I have a gift. I'm going to use it. And he goes on to change the world. Yeah. So what role does faith play in all of this and achieving what we feel like God's calling us to? Yeah. I mean, you've felt a calling of God in your life. How would you encourage people to use their faith as an instrument in this? Well, I mean, I think that faith is everything. And it's, it's interesting as I go throughout, do it and, and, and show the brain science yeah. and the heart science, your brain neurons actually work harder when you were living in a fear-based mindset. So your brain is working harder when you're living in fear. So why not live in faith? It's the whole thing of, well, why not do it? And having this faith knows that, it knows that you are on a plan. God has the plan for you. It's the greatest weight off your shoulders you can have to live in faith. Mm -hmm. We want to doubt it because our, our mind is actually is centered on doubt. Like we're being pulled back daily by society, what everybody else says. But in reality, it's the complete opposite way. It's a full alignment with God. It's having the faith. It's stepping out, understanding that, hey, God's going to make it all work. Just just do it. Just go for it. Yeah. It's a great book.
Great, Thank you very great much. Great book. Thank you. I always wanted to play in the NBA if you can put a good word in for me <laughs> with somebody. I think we can. Right. I'll try, try to. Appreciate you being with us. The Thank book you. is called Do It, The Life-Changing Power of Taking action and I highly recommend it. It's available wherever books are sold again, David. Thank you for being with us. Thank we you so much. Appreciate it.